Hi, I'm Warren. I'm at the International School of Amsterdam. And in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, every kid at my school has an iPad, an iPad of their very own. And if you have iPads at your school, you know that the parents, the first question that they ask is which apps are good? Which apps should they get at home? Which apps do they want to have on their personal iPads? And the reason that they ask that is because to them, educational technology is a lot like this. It's, um, it's flashcards and it's math games. And, uh, and there's a lot more that you can do with iPads than flashcards and math games. They usually want to have the kids in the backseat of the car staying quiet on a long drive. Um, but we want kids to be doing kind of higher order thinking skills. And there's a really good definition that Howard Gardner put out in his new book, The App Generation. He calls app dependent these kinds of things. When you're in one app and you're, all the learning is happening in that app, you're app dependent. You're dependent on the publisher or the author of the app to tell you how the learning is supposed to happen. Um, but Howard Gardner also uses a phrase called app enabled. And what he means by that is when you can use the right tool for the task and use a lot of different apps and seamlessly transition from one app to the next. And some people call that app smashing, using a bunch of different apps, especially to do higher order Bloom's taxonomy stuff, to create and to analyze and to evaluate and to make things like this, to, to publish stuff. So this is something that Pratisha did in Dutch class. Um, and she used a bunch of different apps. She used the camera to take pictures of her classmates. And then she put those into Puppet Pals and made an animation in the Dutch language about the Amazon rainforest that she, she made. And she shared it to YouTube uh, to publish it to her classmates and her teacher, and also to a real audience. And it could be her family or to the whole world. Um, and it doesn't have to be YouTube. If YouTube doesn't work in your country, there's other ways to publish to the internet. Um, but there are a lot of really cool higher order thinkings that come out of this when you use a bunch of apps together. And green screen is one of my favorite. Um, when a kid makes a video with green screen, they are engaging in this problem solving, creativity. These kids uh, are second graders, and they are not standing in front of their rocket ship. Right? They built a rocket ship out of blocks and then they took a picture of it. And right now, they're standing in front of a green wall looking at a picture of themselves on their iPad in front of the rocket ship. And then they have to figure out where that is behind them. That's a real challenge, but they're, they're really good at it. And even though they're young, um, they're able to use all those different apps to reach those higher order thinking skills. And sometimes with a green screen, you get to wear a green bodysuit, which is pretty cool. Um, and you know, it doesn't have to be Puppet Pals, iMovie, um, Camera Roll, all these different apps just smash together to create really cool things. It's not just about the apps, right? It's, so it's about having a tool that you can use with you all the time in, in science class that you can measure and record and document. Um, and you just always have this. It's a lot more effect effective. It's a lot higher order. It's a lot more learning than if you were using uh, an app about the life cycle of a bean plant or a science app that teaches you about beans. And in math, that's like my favorite examples is uh, using a math manipulative, taking a picture of an actual manipulative or a virtual geo board and then doing screenshots of it. But either way, to add text and video and narrate on top of that and share it back out and publish it to really explain, explain your knowledge and to let your teacher know how much you got. This is a, a fraction task that starts out, this is a, a good example of app smashing because it uses so many apps, starts out in penultimate as handwriting, and then it moves uh, as a video in EduCreations, which then uses the mail app to publish to Evernote where the kid can put it into his math notebook to share with the teacher who can then watch it, analyze it, and understand and know that he's really understood all those fraction concepts. It's really cool. Um, but it's, you know, it's not about the apps. Uh, it's about using all those apps together, seamlessly transitioning from one to the next, picking the right tool for the task every time. And so when the parents ask me what app should they get for their kids, I just tell them all the apps that our kids use, and I say, if you can have them put all those together and use them in creative ways to make awesome stuff. Thank you.